Hello, I'm Joy Matthews, an investigator with the Montgomery County Office of Consumer Protection. Our office helps consumers with all kinds of issues, from home improvement scams, to towing complaints, to purchasing a car. I've seen the car dealers getting more aggressive. For this episode of Consumer Compass, we'll be looking at a documentary about auto sales fraud called Driven to Defraud. It was produced by the Maryland Consumer Rights Coalition. Located in Baltimore, the MCRC is a nonprofit organization that advances and protects fairness and justice for Maryland consumers. Driven to Defraud concerns yo-yo sales, dealer kickbacks, and other car sales scams in Maryland. Here in Montgomery County, our office has a good working relationship with new car dealers to resolve complaints towards a positive resolution. The video also includes tips to help you get a good deal on your next car. So let's take a look at a portion of Driven to Defraud and see what we can learn. There are car dealers who will treat you fairly, who want you to be satisfied with your purchase. Then there are other dealers, lots of them, who are experts at selling their cars for the maximum amount you're willing to pay. We will hear from consumers who've been defrauded, from attorneys and activists who've been fighting against these frauds, and we'll give you some useful tips to make sure that you get a good deal the next time you buy a car. If you have the misfortune to walk onto the lot of a predatory car dealer, and there's no sign that says, hey, we're a predatory car dealer. Their objective, and they're very skilled at it, is to suck every possible dollar out of your pocketbook. There's no real price for the car, it's just whatever they can get a finance company to finance you at. I've actually seen on finance contracts a line item called ADP. $1,000, and no one asks because they figure, well, the dealer knows what they're doing. Do you know what ADP stands for? Additional dealer profit. I've seen that on finance contracts. If you're in Maryland, you have a far better chance of being scammed than not scammed. I think that the majority, vast majority of dealerships deal that way with people. I was in the auto industry as an owner-operator, start off as a salesman. I participated in a lot of the legal acts when I was ripping people off. People have short memories. So you can tell them anything you want to, and they're going to forget 90% of it. So tell them whatever they want to hear, and get the order signed, and get them out the door. And a lot of people, I feel like even if they know that they've been frauded, they don't come forward because of maybe shame or embarrassment to say that, you know, I did this or I made this huge mistake. Consumers are always embarrassed. Somebody took advantage of them, so therefore they must be stupid, they must not be very bright, and that's just ridiculous. They're not professional victims, but the con artists are professional con artists. And I've got to tell you frankly that there are a lot of commercials on TV that send me right through the ceiling because we've sued them. And some of the most aggressive advertising is by some of the most aggressive uh, car artists that you've ever met. In fact, many of the large dealerships have gotten as large as they have by creating systems that are successful at exploiting weaknesses in consumers uh, whether it's their credit or their education or the fact that English is not their native language, they have become truly expert at taking whatever vulnerabilities there are and turning it into extra dollars for the dealership. Some dealers will sell you a rebuild wreck or a truck with flood damage or a lemon that couldn't be fixed. These vehicles may cost you a fortune to repair. Worse yet, they can endanger your safety. I went to buy a vehicle that I thought was tip-top shape. Had it two weeks and found out it had been in an accident. So the next day I took the car in, 
basically all they did was a front end alignment on my car. Gave me the paperwork, told me the vehicle was 100% sound. I left the dealership, still had the same issues I had before I went into the dealership. So at this point, I'm very frustrated, and I decided, you know what, for my own peace of mind, I need to have this car checked. Because I do a lot of driving, I'm on the road, and I want to be safe. I took the car to Collision and Repair Center. The gentleman there told me I wouldn't put my wife and kids in this car and drive them around the block. Because the way they repaired this vehicle, I cannot guarantee you that if you get in this car and it gets in an accident, the vehicle's gonna respond the way it should. Well, when he told me that, I took that car home and parked it. I never drove it again. You know, I was out money. I felt uh, violated, so to speak, because basically they presented something to me that wasn't true. I went to buy a nice used car, a Mercedes. And I had some factors that were really included that were important to me to make a decision. And a part of that was, had this car ever been in an accident? That was very, very important to me. I was even given a Carfax. And with that third party information, it helped me to make a decision. And once I drove it and had been driving it, the car started just riding bad. I went to another dealer. And I told him, you know, it's a Mercedes, but it's just not running like a Mercedes. This dealer in Virginia came back to me and told me, now I know why your car isn't running right. They did another third party research on the car, which was called AutoCheck. And when AutoCheck pulled it up, the car had been in a major accident. I, I, I wanted to kill him. I was pissed, you know, because he, he just took, he knowingly took it. He just took my money. He knew it. He brought a, he sold me a car that he knew was a piece of junk. Knowingly brought a car from an auction that was announced that it was in an accident. Gave me a bogus Carfax report. I had already talked to the attorney, so in the lawsuit to be reimbursed in somehow, some form or fashion, my lawyer called me and said, the worst thing that possibly could happen just happened. They filed bankruptcy. That was it. And uh, it, it was a wrap. I, could, I haven't gotten anything. I think I put, with payments and 20, uh, I put close to almost $40,000. And I can't even begin to tell you the maintenance that I spent on that piece of junk. I lost a lot of money. Um, one of the worst experiences, financial experiences, probably the worst I've ever had in my life. The biggest loss. The dealer would be happy to set you up with a car loan. Why? Because dealers have learned how to make money arranging your loan. Dealers have an incentive to stick you with high interest rates. Yeah, what you need to understand is they don't really make much money on what they call the iron. They don't make much money selling the car. Sure, they may overprice you, you know, $1,000, $2,000, and that's a lot of money. I'm not saying it's not. But the real money is in the financing and the kickbacks. For a dealership, only about 10% of their profits are going to come from the actual sale of the car. The vast majority of it, anywhere between 50 and 60%, is coming from the finance and insurance office. That's the office that sells you the financing as well as all those other add-on products like extended warranties, gap insurance, rust proofing, undercoating, security systems. When a car dealer says that they're going to offer financing, what they're really doing in most cases is they're going to make a loan to you that's going to be immediately sold to a, a larger uh, finance company, a bank or a finance company. And the big dirty secret is that there's often a kickback in there. When you buy a car and you finance it from the dealer, the dealer is the creditor. The dealer is making you a loan, but they're going to sell that loan to a lender. Most folks aren't aware that the dealer is compensated through the interest rate that you pay on your car loan. And the way that they do that is that they actually add to the interest rate above what the lender is willing to take as your risk. What they'll say to a consumer is, Mr. Jones, I have great news for you. I can get you financing at 
14%, only 14%. That's really great. Well, that's a true statement. They can get it at 14, but what they don't tell you is that you were actually approved at 10 or less, and that they're going to split the difference, um, the overage, with the lender, that the lender's gonna kick back to them a portion of anything over and above the approved rate. The dealers are basically getting kickbacks from the lenders in exchange for jacking up the interest on your loan. And it amounts to billions of dollars. So we looked at the issue of dealer markups and we tried to figure out how pervasive is this, how, how big of an issue is it. We found that customers who bought cars in 2009 paid $25.8 billion of interest that is solely devoted to this dealer markup, to this kickback to the dealer for making the loan. That's a substantial sum. It's an average, if you average it out amongst everybody who bought cars, that's $800 per customer per car. Among the stack of papers a dealer might put before you when you're signing for a car loan is a form which says you recognize that while the dealer has approved your loan, the dealer's bank hasn't yet approved its loan. If you sign this paper, you could drive your new car home and then get a call a week later saying the financing fell through. The dealer will likely then ask you to agree to a larger down payment or a higher interest rate, and you'll end up paying a lot more for that car. You have a contract. You agree on the terms. The interest rate is low. And then you get the call from the dealer saying, oh, the financing fell through, which is not what happened. They want you to take the car home. They want you to come back two or three days later after you've fallen in love with the car and get the real financing, which is going to be substantially different than what you asked for. A dealer will have you sign some, kind, some form that says, the financing's not final. And if we, the dealer, decide that we can't find a deal to our liking, we can undo the deal. It's the only industry I know of where a retailer can sell you something and then decide days, weeks, or months later that they don't like the deal that they made, force you to come back, and then sign a new contract. And that's exactly what dealers do. The dealer calls up and says, guess what? Your financing fell through. And most people's response is, well, what do you mean? You, you, you told me I have a, a, a final deal. We have a contract. And so many people will say, well, I'm not going to bring it back. I have a contract. And oftentimes, the threat of arrest then comes. You agreed to bring it back. And if you don't bring it back, I'm going to call the police right now. And they get you back in and, and um, twist your arm to sign a, another contract on worse terms. I wrote the contract to this car twice, and I signed a million papers, not knowing what I was signing, just simply was signing papers, and you know, he's just throwing papers in my face. This is for this, this is for that. Sometimes he would say, just sign here, just sign here. They tore the first papers up, so they changed and they tore up all the paperwork that they gave me for the first time, and they rewrote all the paperwork over again, and which, which made my premium definitely go up. I did not know that what was going on with me was illegal. I, I'm thinking that this is a part of buying a car. I had no idea that a company could come back to you and do and say the things they could say. I talked to this lady who was in charge of that financing stuff. So she said, well, if you don't pay the so-and-so amount of money, we'll just sue her exact word, quote unquote, we'll just sue your ass. <laughs> I don't wish this to happen to anybody. This was very traumatic with me, and I don't wish this on anybody. During that period of time on my job, I went through a depression. I took off. I was sick. I was like, I can't believe this is happening to me. The person who goes back and is bluffed or threatened into redoing a contract may very well be stuck with the second contract, which is obviously never as good as the first. This happened to my wife and I years ago when I was still in the Army, not an attorney. Now my wife is an accountant and in her younger days had actually worked for an automobile dealership. We still had no idea 
what I later learned was a yo-yo sale. We were talking, I want to say, two, $2,000 difference in what we thought we had been promised and what they later demanded when we came back for the plates. The reason we were able to resolve this was not because we recognized what had gone wrong, but because I had a bad Irish temper, and it wasn't worth their effort. Members of the military get targeted because they have a, a paycheck that's coming from Uncle Sam, and the dealers then get allotments, so the paycheck goes directly to them. And also, they threaten them, like with yo-yo financing, they say, well, if you don't agree to this, we're gonna say to your command that you're deadbeat, and we're gonna ruin your credit, and then you lose your security clearance and your career's over. Attorney Peter Holland represented two different consumers who were defrauded by the same car dealer with the same car. The dealer forged documents and hid the fact that the car was a prior daily rental. If I could choose between a used car that a grandmother drove, single owner, or used car that a large rental company, I wouldn't pay the same price. And so that is why people don't disclose the prior daily rental. Well, in this case, after we returned the fraudulent prior daily rental, I received a phone call three or four months later from another woman complaining about this car dealer. That woman was Kia Davis. She had gone to the same dealer to buy a car and filled out all the paperwork. After we had talked and signed all the papers, they went in the back for a really long time, and when they brought the papers back out, I didn't have all the papers that I had signed and they just kept trying to assure me that, you know, I didn't need it and it was just this or it was just that. And I'm saying whatever it is, I would like a copy of it if I needed to sign it. And some kind of way they were trying to word it as if it was now better for me. But they had added so many things to the loan that my loan on the car far exceeded the value of the car. I found a lawyer that specified in auto deals, and I found the perfect lawyer for me, for my case. The lawyer actually looked me up, and the next time I spoke to him, he was being very aggressive toward me. And I didn't understand what the problem was because he thought I was some sort of a con artist. You know, well, who are you? What do you do? What? And I'm going, did you hear me? You know, I got this deal with this car. Whose car? Where is the car? Where did you get the car? And I'm looking at the phone, I'm like, hello? <laughs> and when he finally said that he had litigated over the same car. And it turned out that they had sold the exact same car that they had taken back. They had sold it all over again with new um, aspects of fraud and once again not disclosing that it was a prior daily rental. Every time I think I've seen everything, something new happens. Two consumers, same car, both came to me. And I thought once they saw this lawyer returning and you just litigated with this lawyer about the same car, I kind of felt like that was a got you. Not to them. It was business as usual. And that was not the end of it. That was just the beginning. The, the loophole that on the back of the contract in small fine writing that said that they were not liable to go to court, that they could only be taken to arbitration, was a huge problem in pursuing the case. Most dealers are imposing arbitration in their consumer contracts. If you sign a contract with an arbitration clause, you forever waive your right to go to court. No judge, no jury, no right to appeal, no class action. These are extremely important rights. If you sign contracts with these clauses, you are forced to waive your rights before you even know what the problem is. And I have had horrible experiences with arbitration. It is more expensive, takes longer, and is not fair. All the dealers are imposing arbitration in, in their consumer contracts. So they could sell you a salvage car. And this happens, you know, consumers buy a certified pre-owned car, and then they find out it's actually halves of two different cars that were both in wrecks. 
welded together. You know, the classic chop job. What are you going to do? You can't take him to court. The people who founded this country felt very strongly that citizens should have the right to argue their complaints to their peers before a judge in open court with rights of evidence and appeals and everything else. And that has been completely, 100% stripped by these agreements. It's like a big game changer. It means that consumers a lot of times are powerless. You know, they can be cheated, the law is on their side, and that doesn't matter. We've seen how car dealers can hurt your pocketbook through yo-yo sales, dealer kickbacks, and rebuild wrecks. But there are dealers who do business the right way. Some car dealers bypass negotiations and sell cars for a posted fair price. Car sales have been negotiated since the first car was built. And the reason for that is that most of the people who sold cars were in the horse business. And it was true, and it evolved from horse trading, which is another way of talking about negotiating, to the car sales business. People negotiated the price. I short circuit that. I said, look, here's the normal discount. Let's talk. And it was, it was, it was easy. You know, I didn't make much per car. I got sold a lot of cars. The car situation has become very intense, though, because the dealer's profit, quote, margin, uh, has been diminished so significantly. Federal Trade Commission says it's 10 to 20 percent. I can tell you right now, I can show you cars right this minute where the discount's less than 1 percent. And the average is only 4 percent. Cars and trucks combined. So that's been done by the manufacturers. So consumers are bargaining over a diminishing amount of money. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's frankly exacerbated the problem because dealers end up having to make their money on other things besides the car itself because the manufacturers get almost all of the transaction price now. Car dealers are ready for you. Are you really ready for car dealers? you can increase your chances of getting a good vehicle at a fair price and avoiding a real clunker by following these tips. Decide on the kind of car that meets your needs and how much you can afford to pay before you leave the house. Take into account the cost of gas, insurance, and future repairs. Shop for a loan before shopping for a car. Find out how much a credit union or bank will lend and at what rates you can borrow. Never buy a car on the spot. Never buy a car the first day you see it. Don't tell the dealer how much you've budgeted for the car per month. It seems like a friendly, helpful question, but if you answer it, you will have lost control of price negotiations before you even get started. Identify a knowledgeable mechanic and a body shop that can inspect any car you're interested in to evaluate whether it's in good condition and whether it has been involved in any accidents. Be aware that if you sign an arbitration agreement, you may waive your right to a trial by a jury of your peers. Seek out car dealers that don't require arbitration agreements. Car dealers can make a profit by giving consumers a fair deal. Yet many car dealers seem driven to defraud, and the fraud has far-reaching consequences. Predatory car dealers can take away your money, damage your credit, and cost you the car you need to earn a living. That hurts workers, families, and the communities where they live. We all should care about auto fraud because it impacts all of us. Unless the ripoff happens to the individual, people don't get excited about this as they do about other issues, but they should because one day it could very well affect them. We should care about car dealer fraud because this affects everybody. This is not a white issue or a black issue or a rich or poor issue. 
I look at auto finance contracts every day, and I can tell you, I've looked at contracts of a lot of doctors and lawyers who got taken to the cleaner. Okay, they paid $1,000 for scotch guarding. They paid $1,000 for window etch. So this affects everyone, and it actually affects the entire economy. And it also affects the business climate, because if there are some dealers that can get away with it, then other dealers may feel that they're at a competitive disadvantage if they're not doing it. When the bad dealers prosper, the good ones are hurt. And that's not the way the free market is supposed to work. What happens is that as car dealers shift the costs to unsuspecting consumers, the rest of the public ends up paying the bill. Regulation and enforcement of laws that are on the books are important. So if you're a consumer and you have a problem, file a complaint. When they see the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh complaint about a certain practice at a certain dealership, and I know particularly with the Maryland Motor Vehicles on these yo-yo sales, they recognize them even when consumers don't. These organizations, and, and keep in mind I'm not a big government fan in some cases, but these folks are the ones who will correct it. And I've got to tell you frankly that you could make an honest mistake as a dealer once or twice. If you're back the third or fourth time, you need to be hammered because you do these frauds because they're profitable. When they cease to be profitable, you won't do them anymore. Driven to Defraud was produced by the Maryland Consumer Rights Coalition. You can reach their offices by calling 410-624-8981 or go to www.marylandconsumers.org. You can also contact us at the Office of Consumer Protection if you have auto sales concerns. Email consumerprotection at montgomerycountymd.gov or call 240-777-3636. Or come to our Rockville offices here at 100 Maryland Avenue. We can help you with other consumer complaints too. So that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching.